What's going on y'all, the Fender 32 here. In this video, I'm going to be giving a review of Bravo Team. Now, I just got the game at 12 o'clock. I just beat it. Um, it's 12.40 right now. So, I think about two hours, I would say. Um, I played online with one of my friends. So, we got through it kind of quick. Only reason why we got through it in two hours because we played it on the easiest mode. Uh, I didn't happen to know that we played that on the easiest mode until after the game when I asked him what difficulty it was because we got through it pretty quickly. And he was like, uh, it's on easy. I was like, oh man, no wonder why we got done with the game so quick. But this game is so fun. It's a great game to get with your uh, aim controller or to play with your aim controller. But as you may know, the bundle that came out for this game um, included the aim controller with it, such as, or the same thing that Farport has done. Now, I'm going to get with the bad first, since everyone seems to bash this game for some reason. <laughs> but the number one thing I would say is that could be good to make this game even better than it is, is to have free locomotion. That's the number one bad thing, I think. But to be honest, Supermassive Games didn't implement free locomotion for the game in the first place. Everyone just saw that it was a tactical shooter. And they would have thought it would be like Alvo or uh, Firewall, Zero Hour. And just thought that you'd be able to just walk around like you would in Farpoint. But that was not the initial plan for Supermassive Games in the beginning. Now, um, everyone was just so hyped for this game and having a tactical shooter. And just, oh, this game is coming out. It's going to be free locomotion. It was never supposed to be free locomotion. It was all going to be some type of teleportation system uh, like it was in the game. But yeah, I feel like if they just implement free locomotion for the game, such as Apex Construct did with theirs, they sent out an update, and now you can play with free locomotion in that game. If Supermassive does the same thing for Bravo Team, I feel like this game would be even better than it is. Because there were little minor problems that I experienced with the teleportation, um, such as going places where you don't want to go so that you're moving too fast, you know you want to teleport somewhere and you actually look somewhere else or you aim your gun somewhere else and you teleport there instead of where you want to go. Um, I had that happen like probably once or twice, but you can retrace your footsteps by hitting the circle button. So it's all good with that. It's just the game will be so much simpler and you know better if they implemented the free locomotion system. Um, the second problem I had with this game, or the game not having, is 360 turn. You can only do 180 turns. So, um, if I'm in cover and I teleport somewhere and somebody shoot me from behind, I can't like smooth turn or anything. You have to do a 180 turn by clicking the right analog stick, which is on the top, that's closest to your shoulder. So if you hit that down or up, you're gonna turn either backwards or forward depending on where you want to look and whatever situation you're in but um basically looking or turning your upper body left or right is going to be your smooth turning because there's no uh ability to look left or right such as you would with far point or any other game that comes with the move controller and bravo team so i thought that would be a minus for the game uh let's see what else could be a minus for the game? Um, I don't really don't think there's nothing really else to really give it a minus for. Having the fact that you can't really 360 turn, that there's new, no free locomotion. But everything else was good. The cover system was good um, by being behind different objects. Normally I got shot though. I'm behind something and I still would get shot. I don't know if it's because I had my head too high or what. Or, or if I wasn't ducking low enough. But... I seem to always get shot when I was in cover. You actually had to get like pretty low or lean up the right. But it's okay because uh, in the end, the game came out pretty good. Or the outcome of the game was pretty good. You know, the aiming is good. You got your little reticle as you went on far point. In this game, you have your, uh, you got three different weapons, I believe. Four or four. You have your pistol, which you automatically get, which you can't substitute. You have your assault rifle sniper rifle and you have your shotgun on the bad side though this is another minus there was no grenades like you could not throw any grenades or pick up any grenades in the game like i did not see one grenade that was pretty strange for a tactical shooter without having any grenade or any explosives 
the only explosives that you really get in this game is when you are setting a charge to blow up a door to like get to the next level or something like that. So I thought that was pretty, pretty funny. Like it was missing that. It was missing like grenades because there were some moments where there were a group of enemies where you could shoot, but it was like, man, I wish I had a grenade that I actually could throw at him and like blow him up. So I thought that was pretty strange for a tactical shooter not having. Um, yeah, that's all I can think about the bad, but on to the good. The good, the aim controller works perfectly. Um, the the audio was great. The graphics are stunning. I believe they took the same system that he used for the impatient and implemented the Bravo team because, as you may know, you can see your whole body. You can see your arms. You can see your hands. Um, another thing that's good is you have character customization. Now, you can't customize your character from he head to toe, but they do have some different genders that you could use. You can use three different males, and three different females. You can use uh, face one, two, and face three for each one. Face one is normally a Caucasian person, Caucasian male or Caucasian fe female. Number two is normally a uh, African American person or African American woman, on both male and female. And number three, you have your uh, Asian male or Asian female. So that was pretty cool that they implemented those different genders into the game. They just stand one track and be like, oh, we're gonna, you're going to have to be a male or you're going to have to be a female depending on who you are or what you want to play as. You can do that. Um, you don't have to worry about not knowing how to play the game because in the game, they show you how to play. Uh, you actually got to hit the AI because when you first get to the screen, a screen is going to pop up letting you know uh, who you want to be, which is your character. And then it's going to have game mode. The rest is going to be locked. But don't worry, because I got stressed about this too. My friend was like, uh, he had unlocked it by just going to game mode and go to play with the AI, which is the computer, and you unlock everything else, which is the tutorial, the score attack, and to be able to play through uh, the game with the computer. Um, like I said, I happened to play with my friend online who got the game at the same time I did. We both launched it and played through the whole story together. So that, overall, the game was just really fun, man. Um, I've been expecting this game to come ever since it was announced and it got delayed. But luckily, I live to see it launch, finally. And I love the game. Me, personally, I love the game. There may be people out there who has more flaws that they experience. But myself playing a game, I didn't really experience any flaw. You know, I didn't, didn't experience any tracking or mistracking with the aim controller or my headset. Um, I played through it smoothly. It was tons of fun. A nice shoot em up you know. You're not really teleporting. I mean, you're not really moving around like you would in Farpoint. You're teleporting, but everything else is good. Just like the Impatient that I liked, I like this game. Um, I still got to do the time attacks, and I'm still going to try to collect all the trophies. Sorry I couldn't dang on broadcast my gameplay. The game itself wouldn't let me do it. It was just like, you can't broadcast with this application. Then I thought, well, since they're not letting me broadcast, I can record my screen, you know, as you would on your PlayStation, normally how I do all my games uh, without letting it go live. So I did that. I recorded it from beginning to finish. And come to find out, they will not let me post the game up to my YouTube channel by just doing the capture gallery. So I don't know what's up with that. They might send an update out for that. Or I don't know if they want people to see the game or what it is, but that kind of made me mad. I also can't post pictures, which is annoying too. So I don't know what they're doing. But they, they need to fix that so the people can see if they want to buy the game or not. I believe that's probably why they didn't <laughs> let me upload any video or pictures because they didn't want me to or want y'all to see it. But yeah, that's my review of Bravo Team. I'm going to jump back into it right now, even though I just beat it. And I'm going to play through with the computer and try the score attack. But like this video, subscribe to the channel. Um, Sorry, like I said, I couldn't get that broadcast out for you or do anything. It's it's their fault. They won't let me stream it. They won't let me put any video that I capture in the capture gallery. So they need to fix that. But this is the further to signing off. This is the review or my review of Bravo Team first-hand experience. I played it. Not one of those people that just say they don't like it because they never played it, never experienced it. Don't like it. But real review. Thank you all for watching. Peace.